Hi, I'm Jana Samanyak with 360 Alberta, and next week is Workplace Bullying Awareness Week. One in six workers will be bullied on the job, but our next guest believes that statistic is probably much higher. Joining me is Linda Crockett, who is a trauma specialist and workplace bullying expert. Thank you for joining me, Linda. Thank you for having me, Jana. I really appreciate it. So one in six, what do you think the statistic is really? The statistics are always low because most people are not coming forward. This is a type of uh, a workplace abuse that really shames people into silence. And there's a stigma. So most people are not coming forward. I think we'll get more valid uh, statistics in the next couple of years. But right now, I'd say that's pretty low. And what does your work do on the whole? What, what, do, you, what do you do for people? So anywhere from pre inter prevention work, which is training, advocacy, c consultations, needs assessments, uh, prevention work uh, is, can be very, very creative. So all kinds of programs there to intervention work. So I, I do needs assessments. I do consultations. I work with leadership um, and I'll also on a coaching basis, but I also work with individuals and I do a combination that's unique. I guess it's a, a coaching counseling kind of combination. This is a, an experience of a, a human experience. So there are lots of issues involved. There's self-esteem, there's fears, there's anxiety. So you need that coach combination so that you can work on many different le levels that show up. But I'm also a therapist. I'm a trauma therapist. I'm a social worker in clinical practice, in private practice. So if there are more clinical interventions needed, I also specialize in that area. So going back a little bit, was there something in your life that motivated you to really want to help people that are being bullied out there? There, there is. I, I, I've been in social work for 32 years. And at the 22-year mark, I have to say that I didn't know what workplace bullying was. I certainly was an expert and highly trained, I should say anyway, in assessing and addressing child abuse, domestic violence, sexual abuse, addictions, all kinds of abuse. I even trained investigators in child protection, so I really had my eye on the signs. But when it comes to the sophisticated nature, uh, the insidious nature of workplace bullying, I didn't have language for that. None of my colleagues had language. Nobody was really talking about it. So at my 22-year mark, I hit rock bottom with a workplace bullying situation that got me at probably one of my lowest points of my life because I was going through the grief of, of my mother was dying and passed away during that time. And so it was a double whammy that they got me when I was down. And um, so I really suffered. There was a good two-year, three-year period where I was... It wasn't just one-on-one -on -one bullying or, or leadership bullying me. It was a mobbing situation. So the mobbing situation meaning that it was two or more people that were ganging up, ganging me mentality, right? And my the main bully in my life at that time was a psychologist. So he really knew how to get to people's, you know, sore spots or whatever, or their fears. He, he knew how to uh, manipulate situations. And... And he actually probably, in my, in my opinion, groomed other people to join his nature, and that would be my supervisor that was a social worker, another supervisor that was an acting pastor. Um, uh, he also had a couple of HR people and his office manager. So that would be called a, a mobbing situation. And it certainly wasn't my first time being mobbed in the workplace. When I finally hit rock bottom and did some research on this, trying to figure out what was, what was this that was happening to me, because I knew it was hard working. I knew I hadn't done anything to deserve it. Um, but uh, I realized that in my 22 years, I'd probably witnessed it and, and become a target of it throughout my entire 22 years in every department I ever worked in. I just didn't have names for it. So finally, when I hit rock bottom and I, I went looking for help, there was nothing. And any therapist I tried actually made it worse because she didn't really know what she was doing. And it made it worse for me. I couldn't find any help. So... I knew what to do to recover. I certainly did my recovery work and I decided to get a master's degree in this area and keep pursuing more and more information, learning as much as I can and start a company that would be there for people who didn't have my experience. Like I had 22 years of my hands in systems. I knew how to walk through people through systems. I couldn't even survive it. So I worried about people who didn't have my kind of training, who didn't even have English as a first language. How are they gonna survive? So I knew this was coming in Alberta. We would finally have law someday. And so I decided I would open up 
a service that would meet those needs. So it sounds like it does not stop at high school. Oh, gosh, no, it doesn't stop at high school. It, it doesn't even stop it when you become a senior. I mean, we have, I mean, I hate to always deliver this terrible news, but the youngest that we know of that's taken their life because of, of bullying is eight years old and nine years old and 10 years old. But we also know that people our age and older right through to seniors in facilities are taking their lives because of bullying. And we know that people are taking guns into schools because there's underlying issues of bullying. This is far more serious than people realize. So I, yeah, it's all ages, it's all cultures, all religions, all professions. So there is nobody who is exempt from being a bu- from being bullied. No one is exempt from being bullied. The only type of people I have not seen come to my office are people that work in funeral homes. I haven't seen anybody there yet. But I have seen nurses, teachers, firemen, paramedics, lawyers, psychologists, social workers, you name it. I see them. Construction, oil and gas, retail, every form you can think of. I've seen them. I've talked to them. I have to say, Linda, reading some of the some of the behaviors of a bully, some of the items were very, very, very obvious and noticeable, you know, such as, you know, circulating offensive pictures or calling names. But other items look like they may go a little under the radar, you know, Mm -hmm. such as taking work away from somebody without explanation. And is it possible that people can be bullied on the work job on the on the in the workplace without even knowing it I would say that's more possible than you realize that we have as a society we've we are, the behavior is so normalized it's happening right in front of your face and you don't even know it I remember sitting with a group of probably eight women and I was training them at a table we had a nice big computer there and I'm showing them um, um, examples of mobbing while two of them were mobbing one of the ladies at the table I remember another group of 80 people, 80 professionals, uh, they were uh, master's degree, PhD up, all managers, leaders in, in some way, shape or form. And we watched, myself and my facilitator watched as two women at the back were trying to recruit other people to their table and doing bullying tactics towards us as facilitators as we were training on it. So they were whispering notes, rolling their eyes, making derogatory comments about us and trying to recruit the people beside them to, to join them in it. It was happening right in front of us. And we had, you know, six, 78, I said 70, so we had 68 people to manage. We took care of that. But at the end of the day, I realized that's the epitome of how it can happen right there and you don't even see it. So the other uh, validation for that is that I will always ask how many people in this room have known somebody that's been bullied in their life and I will get 98% to 100% of hands showing every time. So So Linda, if you do realize that you're being the victim, that you're the victim of being bullied, what should you do? If you're, if you're realizing that something's not right, you're just confused, you're, you're, you're getting mixed messages, you've got this gut feeling, start documenting right away. Start documenting dates, times, where were you, where did it occur, who was there, what was said, how did it make you feel, and what did you do, who did you tell about it. Just document. Don't keep those documents around. Keep it in a secure place. I always recommend take it home. If you get a nasty email, send it home, but print it off. Keep it in a binder. Keep it in one spot because it can get really messy in here as well as in your note taking. And then that, that actually makes you feel less confident. So for your own health, keep it in one spot. The other thing is make sure your doctor knows because you want another professional documenting and monitoring your symptoms. We don't want you getting sick. We don't want you developing anxiety and having panic attacks. We want to monitor. But most of all, I want another professional documenting that. If you're not sure still, come and see one of us. Come and see me. There's, I'm not the only one in Alberta doing this work. And if you're in an area that I can't get to, I will certainly help you find somebody. So see a workplace coach. Uh, make sure they have some in, you know, knowledge in this area or see an HR consultant that's in private practice and make sure whoever you're looking at has the qualifications and experience in cases of psychological harassment because this is new. So make sure you see somebody that knows what they're talking about. So is psychological harassment different than the rest of the types of bullying? Psychological harassment is the terminology being used in cases of work, workers' compensation board. 
and in the Occupational Health and Safety Act, we're looking at the definition of harassment, and they put the word bullying in there. And I just want to—I think it's important for people to know that bullying, bullying is psychological harassment, and it kind of is on a spectrum where it can go to progress to become psychological violence. I don't know if you've heard of the term gaslighting, and I'll talk to that. But what we're looking at is, is we need to understand that psychological harassment is never a one-time incident. It is an accumulation of incidents over a period of time, three months or more, I would say. Research will say six months or more, but we're seeing cases of three months or more. So you need to know it's never a one-time incident, psychological harassment. It's very similar to domestic violence and sexual assault because there is that shaming factor and it's in the closet and people doesn't want to talk about it. But you know, with time and with, with awareness and people talking and people filing complaints, as per our law anyway, we'll see a change in that stigma like we have with domestic violence and sexual assault. We're no longer always blaming the victim. And if we see a coworker being bullied, what should we do? Again, document. Even if you don't plan to make a complaint, you are now in Alberta, you have a responsibility as an employee to make a report. So at the very least, start making your, your notes, keeping those documentations is primary. A witnesses or a bystander is the best, most powerful uh, resource for ending bullying. Unfortunately, most bystanders leave. Uh, many more by bystanders leave than, than people that are targeted because they just don't want to work for that kind of a, an organization that promotes it or tolerates it. So if you're a bystander, make sure you're documenting, make sure that you have some knowledge, you're not making assumptions, you're not basing it on a bias. Get yourself a look at a book, you know, make sure you've got some clarity on what is the definition of bullying, what is and what is not. That's why training is so important. You know, like any other massive change in a in a society, we'll see a pendulum kind of swing into the extreme of everything's bullying now. And, we, and I'm hearing a bit of that. And we need to understand what, what it is and what it isn't and what to do about it. That's why we emphasize training and not just a one-hour basic webinar that you check a box off. That's just that's kind of cheating in a way. You're not really getting the full picture. Take some training, half day, full day, with somebody who knows what they're talking about. Read a book on it. Read a research paper on it. Get some clarity if you're a bystander. And then let the person know that, that you... that that we have policies and procedures here. We also have an employment assistance program if you need some help. Here is somebody that we know that works in this area. Give them some support that way and, and accept that they might not want to report, but you still have a responsibility to, to do so. And that brings me to another question, the bully. Now, I can't help but wonder if sometimes people are engaging in these little bits of bullying behavior but they don't realize they're a bully is is that even possible i believe it is possible so in the act it says uh, a variety of tact well the, the definition is a variety of tactics over a period of time right so tactics being what you said before gossip undermining throwing people under the bus uh got rumors telling lies all that stuff over a period of time and i said three months then the next piece of the the act is with intent so as a therapist, I am trained to look at the holistic picture here and, and, and really understand the human nature of that. And I can say on the spectrum end of psychological violence, where you've got narcissistic kind of behavior, narcissistic traits, psychopathic, sociopathic, you're seeing more psychological violence and you're seeing more signs of gaslighting. And gaslighting being that extreme where you're, you're literally, you're being told lies, you're being set up to make, to be made to feel that you're crazy. And then you've got other, they're turning other people against you to make them think you're crazy. You actually believe you're losing your mind. So telling you to do one thing one day and the next day going, I didn't tell you that. And then undermining you and really making you feel like you're losing your mind. The other end of that spectrum is the majority of bully types. And I see some of those bully types because after an, inv an investigation identifies that somebody has been bullying and the employer wants to keep that person because they're good at their job, they'll call me and say, Linda, will you do some work with this person? We'll send them to you on a mandatory basis. If they don't come in, they're terminated. So they do come to see me and I get to learn those stories. And I, I do get to learn that there's a lot of very valid factors that are layering on top of layers that actually disconnect these people from their moral gauge, right? So they've forgotten who they used to be and they got away with 
insulting people. They got away with harassing. They got away with incivility and abrasiveness. And, and some of them got promoted for it. And some of them got rewarded for it. The authoritarian leadership style, for example, is a risk factor for bullying. And we used to praise that. That used to be quite the, the popular leadership style. The laissez-faire leadership style is another risk factor because that's where they're doing nothing. And there's all these historical employee issues that are piling up, jealousy, and balance of work, resentments. That's a risk factor for bullying. So all these factors have to be teased out and understood and assessed individually because every bully is different. And some of them might be suffering from a mental illness that they never got treated or they're not taking their treatment. Some of them might have addiction problems. Some of them might be having affairs in the workplace and they want to scapegoat somebody else so they don't get caught. So there's all these interesting stories, you know, that they might have a physical illness that was never assessed. That's the kind of thing I'm seeing. And we get to work with all those layers. We find out there's actually, a, there's underneath there and it's not easy to get there, but it's doable because these brains of ours are not hardwired and we can change. It sounds like there is so much more to workplace bullying than, than we all thought at first. You bet you. It's, it's very complex. It's, it's insidious. Uh, it's, there's many layers involved. Just with you and I here, there's two human stories right here. You know, so when you've got a case of bullying, there's usually two, three, four people. That's four stories. And you've got to layer, the, you've got to understand each person's perspective. So it's my philosophy to work with the employers, the leaders, the, the employees that are perpetrating, the employees that are targeted, and the bystanders. We need to work with all sides to understand that and really create long-term sustainable change. For more information on how you can become a bully-free workplace, please visit www.abrc.ca. I'm Jana Semenyuk with 360 Alberta.